Hello guys and welcome to another retro review. Uh, today we have the Hot Toys Jack Nicholson Joker from Batman 1989. This is the DX-08. Uh, this is one of my favourite Joker portrayals in, in a movie. Uh, you know, Heath Ledger's up there as well, but Jack Nicholson's also got a bit of nostalgia to me. You know, even though I'm a 90s baby, uh, an early 2000s baby, uh, Jack Nicholson, you know, is a big part of me as a kid, as well also as Mark Hamill. But today, this review is going to be solely Jack Nicholson Joker from Hot Toys. You know, and in my opinion, it's a figure that is pretty much timeless in my opinion like it still holds up to today's standards of figures uh the likeness is better than some figures in hot toys you know it's better than some of the releases hot toys do today in my opinion of course and i might go a little bit further into you know licensing and character license and actor's license are about this figure to maybe explain why Hot Toys nailed this so well in their first attempt. But you know, I'll get into that a bit later on. We'll talk about the actual figure first and then we'll get more deeper into that. There's, a, there's also so much stuff you get with this figure. You know, it's obviously a DX figure, so you get, you know, the nice box there. You get a heap of accessories. You get a whole swap out suit for the more tail uh, suit that he had on the bottom there, where it splits up at the back to two tails. I probably won't, you know, redress him. Because this is my per this is my preferred look. You know the classic DX base that they still use today. The DX nineteen being, you know, the newer DX coming out. Hopefully this year would have this same base, well the the same shape that is. And with the chrome nameplate there. So what I might do is... I might start with the accessories first. And just show what's in that box. Because I'm not really... I'm just going to open the box and show the accessories. And then I might... You know, get that over and done with. And then go with the whole... In-depth, detailed movie... Comparison... With this piece... So, I'll let him spin around one more time, and I'll cut away, and I'll open that up and show you what's in there. So, just quickly inside the box here, uh, we've got a read-up. And obviously, on the bottom there, it tells you what, obviously, this is... It's so obviously the Joker, one six scale collectible figure. We've got a read up there. Maybe I'll zoom in just a touch. There we go. So you guys can read that up. And as good as these boxes look, you know, as the years go by, as you constantly open and close these, they do start to crease and split. And I do know the DX-17 or 18, I think they were both the Darth Maul figures. They kind of redesigned this fold-out look with the magnets. So, I don't think we're going to get that much creasing with the newer DX style boxes compared to like this or the DX-11. I know the DX-11 suffered a lot. And what I'm going to do is move just on this side. Like I said, you get a lot of accessories here, and 
just for the sake of I'm not going to really use any of these. Uh, I'm not going to take them out. But what you do see here is obviously a swap out jacket. Obviously, that's the crotch grabber. The actual display base goes in here. You've got... Let me zoom in. Touch a bit more. There we go. you got some money. Uh, now, if I remember correctly... This money is double-sided printed, while the DX11, I don't think had double-sided, you know, visible print of money, while I think this one does. Uh, you got the classic Joker card, you got the chattering teeth, you've got, a, I think, a cane, the gas mask, the microphone, you've got the massive pistol that... He takes the Joker shoots the Batwing and takes it down in one shot. You got the gun which you saw at the start of the video, but it has an extended bang flag. And two radio devices. Uh, I think one's a radio device and one's at the actual detonator to the balloons that had the Joker gas. At the end of the movie, at the parade scene. And I think the microphone was at the parade scene as well. So, because I really don't like opening this box up, that's probably it with showcasing it. Oh, and obviously it comes with a front cover with a Joker-like mirror type thing. Uh, a lot of the DX boxes had like a, a little case on top with, you know, a card or some gimmick. This has like a little a plate, a Joker plate. But again, it's nothing that special to show. So, that's pretty much it with the accessories. So now I'll cut away and we'll get right close up with the figure and we'll do some movie comparisons and all that. Okay, so here's the Clown Prince of Crime right up to the head sculpt. Uh, obviously, I'll, I will go a bit closer up once I take the hat off, the top hat or fedora. Uh... You know, I'm just going to say it right now. In my personal opinion, this is Hot Toys' best figure in my collection. And I would go as far as to say that it's the best one they've ever made. Uh, just the detailing and, you know, the tailoring and all the accessories that this comes with. Uh, the rolly eyes. Uh, and also the accuracy. Like, I think this is... The Hot Toys most accurate figure and like I said before I might go a bit deeper into why they nailed this one uh, you know and then with some other figures they might might have like you know dropped the ball or not have given uh, as well as an attempt compared to this and you know everyone's got their personal opinions of what their favorite figure or favorite character is uh, from Hot Toys, so if you know other people, other people are gonna have different opinions. So I'm fine with if people disagree in me saying that this is their best figure. Uh, I think even if you guys, if some people don't think this is the best figure or definitely up there, in my opinion, it's also the best Joker. If you just want to uh, have the category of just Joker figures, Hot Toys have made. Uh, I, I think this is the best one they've done, even in that category. Uh, maybe the Arkham City Joker, the Mark Hamill. I think that's a really, really close second. I just personally think the accessories weren't that good for that, you know, that figure. But uh, what I'm going to do is I might actually take the hat off. So just really quickly, this is just felt. So this is really, really nice. And nothing has really degraded at all, to be honest. If anything, you know, I've got a little bit of lint, which I might have to get a roller and just take it off. It's not that big of a deal. But yeah, this is felt. And this is real fabric as well. The black part on the fedora there. So yeah, this is really nice. 
part the main course basically is the head sculpt here so I'm gonna push him a little bit closer and we'll go a bit more further up but yeah just look at that Hot Toys nail more older uh, characters like Jack Nicholson well Jack Nicholson wasn't even that old I think doing the Joker but because Joker was hugely disfigured in that movie Hot Toys do a really good job with this type of detailing compared to a clean face sculpt and that's why I think it's one of their best head sculpts the more older the character is in age I think Hot Toys nail while the younger the younger guys you know, they've got a little bit of more work to do when it comes to accuracy. But yeah, the makeup is flawless on this. Well, technically, it's bleach going by the movie because, you know, this is going more classic comics where... Jack Napier fell in the vat of acid. So his whole face became bleached white, not makeup. And he's obviously got the permanent grin, which I think Barry Keegan is probably the most recent Joker that have the permanent grin like Jack Nicholson. Where other Jokers, you know, you had Heath that physically manipulated his face. Uh, Joaquin, Joaquin Phoenix didn't even have anything like disfigurement. It was more, that was more like a mental analysis of a character. But you can just see how good this detailing is. Also, while I'm right up close like this, I might as well just move a little bit on this side and throw some movie comparisons just to really hammer hammer it in how accurate they got this and I also want to talk about uh, you know uh, the reason I think they absolutely nailed this for their one and done figure like for example Hot Toys, it's no secret Hot Toys have done numerous Jokers from uh, the Dark Knight, Heath Ledger's version. And in my opinion, they haven't really nailed Heath Ledger's likeness. And it's taken them, you know, they've done multiple attempts doing it. And rumor is going by Queen Studios making theirs. Hot Toys might, you know, remake another one. But... I think what it also has to do, especially with Jack Nicholson's Joker, uh, is the licensing. Uh, so what I mean about that, I think the reason they nailed this so good in their first attempt was because Jack Nicholson's actual license is pretty much, as of right now, impossible to get. So I think Hot Toys went all out with this knowing that they will never have the chance to redo this again. Or, who knows, maybe they might do it again. I personally don't think they will anytime soon. You know, uh, Hot Toys are not the company they were when they made this, where they had a bit more love for classic movies. You know, I think they're way past that now. You know, ju just for example, even the tailoring. You know, this jacket is way more accurate than any of the Heath Ledger Jokers they gave out and produced. You know, the DX11 famously had the nightgown fluffy robe look. Well, you know, this is just 100% accurate. You know, there's nothing wrong with this at all.
You got the lapel there. With the flower with acid shooting out of it. You got the checkered bow tie there. Now the hands. I think this is the only negative is the hand does not, you know, grip on the actual trigger. It's it's quite odd why they even did this, but it's more like a pointing hand, but this is the only hand that holds this gun. And it doesn't, you know, the index finger doesn't go in the actual trigger to hold it. So you kind of got this awkward hold. And before I actually cut away to do the rest of the tailoring of the and clothing, Obviously, the eyes have the old school purrs, which Hot Toys have pretty much gotten rid of it because they were known to break. And especially this figure in particular, always, you know, there was a lot of problems with that. So what I'll do is I'll spin the head around. And I still think they hid the seam line pretty well. Like you can't, really see the seam line. You know, you would think this is a fully sculpted head sculpt. But it's not until you... It's not until you do this. This obviously comes apart with the magnet. And I'm not even going to touch this. You know, I'm pretty lucky mine. Mine came sealed brand new when I bought it years ago. I'm not even going to attempt to move that because I already know the risk of that snapping is very high. And I don't know if you can see there, there's a different color. Looking at on camera, I don't know if that's a stress mark on the plastic that it might break if I overuse it. So, I've kept it in the eye position I want to keep it and I've never moved it since. So I'm really not planning on doing that anytime soon. But yeah. And I think if Hot Toys were to redo this, I think that would be the only exception is to give the more updated version where they have two separate sockets for both of the eyes instead of the one. But like I said, with the licensing, I don't know if they have uh, another chance of doing this just because it's extremely hard to even get Jack Nicholson's license anymore. Like, NECA have tried to do it for years, especially with The Shining or even their 7-inch Batman line. And... They've never been able to get the likeness, so... I think Hot Toys at that time were really lucky they even get this. And they made two versions of this. Uh, I think the other one was the Jester. Or I think it was the Mime, mime suit, sorry, yeah. It was the Mime. That one I don't have, but I know that one looks great. Uh, looking at other reviewers doing it. But I thought I would get this. This is the definitive version. So I don't really need seconds. So yeah, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom out and cut. And I'll show the tailoring and get into more detail on that. Okay, so here's the clothing and tailoring of this uh, Jack Nicholson figure. Uh, like I said before, this is pretty much a 10 out of 10. Uh, I don't see any inaccurate parts to this. Uh, like I said, there's two swap out jackets. So you got this one is the trench coat. He uses what he wears at the end of the movie. And also the basically the first introduction we get to Joker. And then the other one is 
the tail split at the back, which I think he wears where he first meets Vicky Vale. And he basically gasses that restaurant up. And, you know, he wears it a couple of other times as well, I think. And there are actually a couple of suits that Jack Nicholson wore in the movie. Uh, a lot of people think it was just this one, you know. Well, this one and the mime one are probably the most standout. Uh, you also got the Smilax. Or Smilex. The kind of advert that Joker did where the face cream or sunblock was uh, the laughing acid or, or gas or something like that that just turned that basically killed people, I think. Uh, there's uh, also the art exhibit where basically, you know, Joker vandalizes the art uh, while listening to Prince. Uh, <laughs> there's also the suit that he wore when he shot Bruce Wayne. You know, that was also a different suit. Uh, so, yeah, there was actually a, uh, a fair chunk of uh, different suits in the 89 movie. Uh, but, again, this one is the most iconic one. And at the same time, you got to change out with, obviously, the other one, like I said, with the split tail at the back. So, even, even though I'm just showing you this one, you do have the other option. And I'll throw that one up as well. Just uh, a reference picture of what that one is. Uh, obviously, I'll go around and show the other ones that I mentioned too. Just so you know the difference between the other ones. Uh, also, I think a good thing to point out. While I'm up... While I'm showing, you know, the torso up. Uh, this arm here, I've never even moved before. You know, this is the only arm I've moved... And it's not like this one is loose, but this one's a bit more stronger. Giving that, you know, obviously I kept this arm straight as possible to mimic the scene where he shoots, you know, he introduces himself as the Joker and he pretty much does this scene and shoots uh, basically his mob boss. I forgot the guy's name, but he, he kills him basically. Uh, which is surprising. I was, I was surprised that this joint, the joints are still well. It's more going down. That they're a bit bad. But at the same time, I'm playing a bit of a balancing game here. So I'm probably going to pop his hat back up. I, I think in the box, it, there's a specific hand that holds the hat a bit better. So I'm going to do is just going to pop this back. And I'll go back to the pose I was doing before. Just because it's probably the easiest to showcase. So... Put it like that. Okay. There we go. So what I'm going to do is go to bring him a bit forward. Zoom down to the pants. Okay, there we go. And like I said, the, this whole figure is a 10 out of 10 with accurate, with the accuracy here. And the reason I got the crotch grabber and the base is because the ankles here are the only negative I have. But again, this is really, really old. So I can excuse loose joints. And if I really wanted to, I could just replace the body. But it's not, it's it's only this part that is really loose. It's, it's only the ankle joints. So when you have the whole display base, which again, it's a DX figure. So a lot of people are going to display this, display this Joker as this. So it's not really a massive issue. And, you know, this is, it's Jack Nicholson Joker. Like he's not doing elaborate poses for you to have him, you know, with a leg up or something like that. So I'm I'm fine with this uh being slightly loose. I can excuse it for the age and for the fact that you know Jack Nicholson wasn't doing any extreme elaborate poses to begin with. But uh everything on this figure like I've said and I've probably said it more than enough, but 
everything here is accurate from the pants to the actual detailing on uh, the pants. The kind of like, I don't know what that is, kind of like a custom design. Y you know, it is Joker, he like, he kind of likes that flamboyant custom stuff. Uh, also, the shoes are very accurate too. Uh, surprisingly, there's no spats, which that it's accurate to the movie, but you know, Joker's known to have the actual spats, which you know, that's comic book Joker. But yeah, everything is pretty much spot on to the movie, you know, and I love when Hot Toys go all out and do socks as well. It's not DX11, uh, where that has really, really great detailing in the socks, but again, it's accurate to this movie. And what I actually thought would be a good idea right now is to actually probably talk about all the other movie jokers from, you know, going from Caesar to Romero all the way down the line. Uh, so I think it would be a good idea to start from Cesar Romero. Uh, in my opinion, Cesar Romero was a great joker. Uh, he, in my opinion, is the most iconic joker in the Silver Age line era of Batman. Uh, the Silver Age was basically a kind of weird shift from the Golden Age where comics became more comedic. And I think Cesar Romero was their definitive Silver Age Joker in that comedic way. Uh, then we go to obviously Jack Nicholson here where a lot of people think Heath might be the scariest Joker on screen. I actually disagree and think Jack Nicholson here is the most scariest and unpredictable out of all of them. Uh, Jack Nicholson's basically the mix of golden, silver, and bronze age of Batman comics that have Joker in it, obviously. And I think... Uh, He's the best representation of all three of them combined. Even still to this day, I don't think anyone's been more comic accurate than Jack Nicholson. Aside from Mark Hamill, which... Mark, for people that don't know, Mark Hamill's version of the Joker was inspired by this version. Uh, they both had the similar backstory. They both were named Jack Napier. And that's where Mark Hamill got his inspiration and obviously Bruce Tim and... The other guys that done the animated series, they got all the inspiration from this version, Jack Nicholson's version of Joker. But obviously we're talking about movies here. Uh, you know, if we weren't talking about movies, Mark Hamill is my Joker, as well as Kevin Conroy is still my Batman. But uh, we'll just talk about movies. So we'll go down to now Heath. Heath, in my opinion, was the best like, master schemer and planner of Joker's. He was basically an anarchist, which I really like that side of Joker. That's, you know, going more Jim Lee, Lee Bromero style, which, you know, is more the modern era of Joker's. Even, like, a hint of just a little bit of Greg Capullo and also, like, Norm Brayfogle, like, all those guys, you know, 90s, late 90s to early 2000s. That's pretty much Heath's inspiration when it came to the guys writing that Joker. And then obviously we got Jared Leto, which, you know, he's probably not, it's not really completely fair to judge his version of Joker. Uh, in my opinion, it was pretty much an attempt to replicate this version, in my opinion, Jack Nicholson, the more unpredictable mob style Joker, uh, which, you know, in the short the short time span he was in that actual Suicide Squad movie, and also the Snyder Cut. I don't think they really nailed that version, uh, but it was a different take, but wasn't executed well, in my opinion. And then obviously we got Joaquin, where Joaquin was more the rage and the more uh, psychological side of Joker, 
which, yeah, he was pretty much rageful in that movie, wasn't he? Especially after he killed his mum in that movie, he just went full rage mode, you know, he obviously killed Murray, and it's hinted that he killed uh, Zazzy Beats' character, and maybe that psychiatrist or psychologist at the end. And then we obviously got Barry uh, Keegan. Uh, again, he's much like Leto, where not not that not he's bad. I actually think he's pretty good, but we don't really have enough to judge of him yet. But from what we've seen, he's more modern. He's a hundred percent more modern era as compared to here, Jack Nicholson. He's more the classic gold, silver, and bronze age version. Uh, Barry Keegan looks very much again like Greg Capullo. Uh, Lee Brumhill, maybe a hint of Jim Lee, Hush, but uh, yeah, it's again, it's a very, very different take on Joker, but again, Joker has so many different interpretations, I'm up for as many versions as we can get, but at the same time, I think uh, we, we might have an oversaturation of Joker, where if we make this new version in Robert Patterson's universe more of less is more, I think that's probably the best way for them to go with that Joker. But at the same time, uh, Batman needs a Joker. He's the yin and yang. We, we definitely need that opposite to rival Batman. And there's no other better villain in Batman's rogues gallery than Joker. So, uh, yeah, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get this, uh, get Jack Nicholson here off the rotating, uh, base turntable. Uh, I might just do a quick comparison with, with, you know, just a little tease of other Joker figures I have. Uh, obviously I don't have Heath yet because I sold my DX11 and I'm getting the Queen Studios one as a replacement. So, obviously when that one releases, I'll compare it with this one. As, you know, Heath and Jack Nicholson are my favourite movie jokers so far. So, I'll let him spin around one more time and I'll just get another figure or maybe two out and do a quick comparison of them. Okay, so on the left is the 1-6 scale Igomos statue from the Batman animated series. Uh, obviously voiced by Mark Hamill. And like I said before, Mark Hamill's version of Joker was heavily, heavily inspired by Jack Nicholson. So that's why I have him there next, week, next to them. And obviously there on the right, you've got the Medicom... 1-6 scale Jim Lee Hush Joker. In my... And obviously that's a custom base done by me based on the comic panel. Uh, like, I said before, like I just said, uh, in my opinion, that's Medicom's best 1-6 scale relating a Batman figure. You know, that that's just... It's just a flawless figure, in my opinion. And it looks 100% accurate to the Jim Lee artwork. But, as you can see, everything... Even though these are three different companies, everything's pretty much true to the scale. I mean, if, if you exclude the fact that this one's stepping on the crates... And later on into the year, I can't wait to pair this one up with Heath Ledger, the two separate versions from Queen in the prison cell and the one on just a regular circular base. You know, just having a review of, with two of my favorite Jokers would be, you know, amazing to see. What also would be amazing is to see Queen tackle this with you know, they can even go way more extreme than this. Maybe give a more stronger body with magnets, you know, real metallic gun, uh, real 
well not real but rooted hair with the sheepskin they do. Uh, that can even give more of an elaborate display base compared to Hot Toys. That would be insane. That would actually tempt me to sell this. You know, as much as I said this is my favourite figure in my collection. Queen, in my opinion, like... Going by their protos from Heath's Joker. I think that can go up and beyond with this version too. If they really want to push it that far. But yeah, this is just a very quick comparison of other 1-6 scale jokers I have. I've got a bit more, but you know, it's limited space here. And I thought these two are more identical looking to this version. And obviously, they, you know, this kind of being an offshoot of Jack Nicholson's version, I thought these two would look really, really good together. And you can see there's some similarities with these two as well. But yeah, I think that's it with the comparisons. Uh, you know, I'll cut, move these two out, and we'll wrap it up. And there we have it. The Hot Toys DX8. Jack Nicholson Joker from the 89 Batman movie. Again, this is my favorite Hot Toys figure I have in my collection. Just because how much this movie means to me. And I know this movie does mean a lot to other people too. Also, I also got to mention the second movie, Batman Returns, is just as good as the first one. If not, maybe even better. You know, I think Jack Nicholson was more iconic as a villain compared to the other villains in the second one, Penguin and obviously Catwoman. But it's they're both equally as good. And, you know, I'm honoured to have this as part of my collection, especially for my Joker collection. My ever-growing Joker collection, actually. As we'll see in the couple of months as that Heath Ledger Joker gets produced and finally released. So I think that's pretty much it for today. If you guys do like these retro reviews as much as I do, make sure you like and sub to see more. I've also got some custom work on the way. And, you know, in the meantime, I've been doing a lot of retro stuff just to keep myself occupied until those custom uh, bodies and custom fabrics and all that come so I can do uh, videos on them as well. But in the meantime, I might just continue doing these retro reviews. I also do a lot of reactions as well on certain stuff, pop culture stuff, trailers and, you know, all that. So if you do want to check them out, you know, check them out. If you guys also just want to wait for these, you know, make sure you like and sub. And I'll see you in the next video.